Hello. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to import an Excel Power Pivot model into a SQL Server Analysis Services tabular model using Visual Studio. So let's get started. We have a simple model here. Uh, let me switch to Power Pivot. And you can see it has two tables. The first one is coming directly from a database server. And the second one, as you can see by the icon here, is linked to an Excel sheet within my file, which is right here. Before you start importing it in, into uh, SSAS, you would want to make sure that you have access to uh, an SSAS tabular server, which I have so right here. So let's switch to Visual Studio. And firstly, you would want to make sure that you have some of your settings in place. So you go to Tools, Options, and under Analysis Services, Data Modeling, there's a default workspace server, and in Deployment, there's a default deployment server. You would want to use it, you would want to point these to the SSAS tabular servers that you want to use as a workspace and for deployment. And they can be the same server, and you can see in this case I'm pointing, I'm using dot, which essentially refers to the local server. In fact, it is recommended that when you run this migration, you run it on your SSAS uh, workspace server itself. We start by just clicking New Project. And the one you want to select is under Business Intelligence Analysis Services and look for Import from Power Pivot. We'll give it a nice name and just hit OK. And now it's going to ask us for the Power Pivot file that we want to import. We'll select that. And it's doing its work in the back end. And there you go, your model has been imported into Visual Studio. The first thing you would notice after migration is that your linked tables aren't changed. In fact, uh, SSAS Tabular does not support linked tables at all. So whereas in our earlier model, we had this table which was nicely linked back to an Excel table, once we migrate it to Visual Studio, you lose that link, you lose that connection. So although the data is migrated, it behaves as if you had pasted this data in. Uh, so if you go back to Excel, uh, so besides having linked tables, you have this ability to just paste any data directly into Power Pivot. And that's how it ends up as in Visual Studio, as pasted data. And although you can manipulate it, you can change it, update it uh, by paste to pen, paste to place, and so forth. Uh, but really, the best advice here is that uh, whether you're using Power Pivot or Tabular, uh, try to stay away from linked tables and pasted tables, and try to power your tables directly from a database server if you can. Let's peek under the covers a little bit. So this is the file, Excel file that we migrated. With Excel and Power Pivot, of course, the model definition and the model data, both of them are stored within the single file. And in this case, we can see it's about 23 megs large. Things change with Visual Studio. This decouples the model definition from the model data. The model data actually lives on your workspace server that you specified in your settings. So if you go into your work, workspace server and look under databases, you would probably find something like this with a GUID at the end. That's where your working data now resides. And if you look in your project definition files, let's open that. Now ignore this big file, which is just a backup of the data. Uh, all the other files are really small in size. And they're also text-based. So if you open the model.bim, which is the main definition file, you would notice that is pretty much XML. What all of this means to me really is that uh, uh, saving your projects is a snap and you can also very easily check uh, the files that you have in, in source control. Working in Visual Studio you would use this little button quite a lot. It says analyze in Excel and that's what it lets you do. So we're going to click that and let it open Excel for us. And what it's going to do is, it's going to open up an Excel file which is linked to your working model. So as you're writing measures, making changes, uh, this is where you would come to test things out. You probably miss the power pivot field list that you're used to, but remember that you can do some of those similar, same actions here as well. You can certainly insert slicers, it's just going to be a little more work. 
And what I found is uh, that this little feature, Show Fields Related To, comes in really handy. And you can use this to filter down the set of things that you see down here. Uh, and this works especially well if you have tons and tons of uh, tables in your model and multiple data sets. Deploying your model couldn't be easier. All I do is I come in, select my project, and first I click on Properties just to make sure the server and the database name that I'm deploying to. Once I've double-checked that, then I just right-click and say Deploy. And there we go. Our model is now deployed to our server. So now if we switch to SQL Server Management Studio and I refresh this, now I see the, the database that I just deployed. Now, of course, in this case, my workspace server and my deployment server are both the same. Uh, but in typical production environment, you would have different servers playing that role. To be able to create Power View reports connected to your new SSAS tabular model, uh, the first thing you would need to do is to create a, a BI semantic model connection or a BISM file. So let's do that. So you specify the name of the server and the name of the database that you're connecting to, and that's it. And once the BISM file is created, all you need to do is click on the Power View icon to create Power View reports connected to your new model. There you go.